Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the all new MacBook Air M3 for 2024. Apple has updated this a little bit, so I thought we'd unbox it, take a look at it, see how it compares with other versions as well, such as the M2. Now this comes in at $1,099 and goes up to $2,299 for the 13 inch or $2,499 for the 15 inch. We have Midnight, which is this color, as well as Starlight, Space Gray, and Silver. Let's go ahead and flip it over and you'll see here we have the 16 gigabyte model with 512 gigabyte SSD. It starts at 256, goes up to two terabytes. I really wish it would start at one terabyte, but either way, this is the 512 model and it comes in at $1,500. Let's go ahead and open it up here. We'll peel this off and take this off the other side. And we also have the option of an eight core or 10 core CPU. This is the 10 core. And with the M3 10 core, Apple actually adds an AV1 decoder this year. Let's go ahead and open it up. And it does come in eight, 16 or 24 gigabytes. And this is actually 16 as I showed. Let's take this out of the package here and see what we've got. So of course we've got our typical documentation. And I think I've got everything here. So a MacBook Air quick start guide, as you would expect, as well as MacBook Air and some stickers to match in midnight, which is always nice. We didn't see anything with the Apple Vision Pro or some of their more recent products. So it's great that we have matching stickers. And when it comes to the power adapter that's included, we have a couple different options. There's one here. This has actually got two ports in it. So a 35 watt dual port charger, you can see here, or you have the option for a 70 watt. It just depends what they have in stock, but you can e use either one with them. I typically use a 70 watt as it's a little bit faster, but either way, you can use both of those, charge your Apple Watch at the same time or something else. We also have a matching adapter, which is great, MagSafe. So we'll open this up here. And you'll see that one end is white where we have USB-C that plugs into the adapter. The other end is midnight or this blue color with a nice braided color as well, or braided cable rather as well. So pretty nice overall, what we'd expect so far. No differences here so far. Let me put the box away and take a closer look at the MacBook. So here's the MacBook itself. Let's take the wrapper off of it. There we are. And like I said, this is the midnight color. And now one of the things that they've done this year is update the coating so it's less fingerprint resistant or it's more fingerprint resistant rather. So if I touch it, you'll see that it does leave some marks. One thing I did is while I was at the Apple store, I took a picture of one that people had already touched and it already had some smudges on it. So how it compares to the M2 is hard to say. However, I have an M2 that's right here that my daughter uses. And also I wanted to mention they discontinued the M1 with sort of this sort of wedge shaped. This is no longer for sale, but we do have the M2 here. And this is one, like I said, my daughter uses, and you can see the fingerprints from using it regularly with midnight. So hopefully this one is much more resistant to those fingerprints and side by side, this gives you an idea of the color. There's a slight difference here. The M3 is a little bit darker, maybe a little bit less blue in it. I don't know if you can see that, but side by side, there is a slight tint difference here. Also, when it comes to the ports on the side, nothing has changed here. It's the exact same chassis. So the great thing is we still have two 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks. And then on the other side, we also have our Thunderbolt 3 slash USB 4 ports. This is great. And one of the new things that we get with the newest version is we can run two displays. So we can run one 6K display off of these ports or two 5K displays with the lid closed. We can't run it with the lid open. So one 6K display with it open open to 5k with it closed. Now, as far as the overall weight, it's 2.7 pounds or 1.24 kilograms, and it has the same display as last year. So let me set aside the old one for now. We've got the same display. Let's open it up here. We'll take this cover off. It automatically boots up. We've got the same display. So it's 2,560 by 1664, 500 nits with wide color P3. We also have a four speaker array here. So we don't have the six speakers of the 15 inch, but we do have four speakers. Let's see if we can see any of those with magnet paper. So if we bring in the magnet paper, you can see some of the ports here. Looks like we've got the speakers just here and here at the top with a couple different speaker arrays. So those are the different speakers and everything else is very, very familiar here. 
Now let's go ahead and get this set up and see what it's like. So we'll go ahead and select English, but you could select whatever you'd like. And now we select our country or region. It automatically selected based on where I'm located, the United States. I'll click continue and then we can set up accessibility. And I'm not sure what that little jump back was, but we can set up accessibility or click not now. Then we'll select our Wi-Fi network. Now it says there's a day one update for Mac OS 14.4. We'll update later so we can see what version shipped with it. We'll click continue. We can migrate different things such as a windows PC or a Mac. We'll skip that for now. And now we'll put in our Apple ID. Now we'll have to agree to the terms of service and we'll click agree. Now we'll select a password and we can also allow your Apple ID to reset it. Now we're at the part where it says, make this your Mac. You can add location services. I'll just leave everything as default for now and click continue. Now it's asking if I want to use file vault disk encryption, I'll just click continue. I leave everything as it is. And now we'll set up touch ID. So we'll just touch our finger to the touch ID sensor. These are great. I do wish we had face ID, but these are great in general. Again, we'll just continue to set it up. Works as you would expect. And then we'll click continue. It will ask you if you want to actually add things such as Apple pay. You can skip that if you want to, like I did. And let's see what version we have installed on Mac OS. So if we go to about this Mac, as you can see, we have Sonoma 14.3. We actually have Sonoma 14.3.1. So it's actually a couple versions behind at this point. Let me go ahead and get everything set up here. And once it's set up, We'll then compare it to other versions as well with the M2. I have a very similar M2. This actually has one terabyte of storage. Now everything's set up. We're also updated to the latest version. So we have Sonoma 14.4. So the latest version of Mac OS, let's go ahead and take a closer look at a few different things. The first thing is if we go into our system settings and go down to wallpaper, one thing to note is they haven't really updated any wallpaper with this version. We're still seeing the same version we had before with the radial blue. That's what they had on the previous MacBook as far as the update. So you can switch to whatever we have here, but there aren't really any new ones as far as that part goes. Also, there's a couple things I wanted to mention before we run benchmarks and things. The first thing is this is a 52.6 watt hour battery. It's good for 18 hours of Apple TV movie playback or 15 hours using Safari, according to Apple. Also, if you have the 70 watt charger, you can charge at that full speed, which would bump this up pretty quickly if you use USB-C. Additionally, with the M3 chip, we now have Wi-Fi 6E along with Bluetooth 5.3, so we get a little bump there as well. We still have the 1080p FaceTime camera, unfortunately. They haven't updated that to 4K, but given that this top is so thin, that may be a little bit difficult. But let's go ahead and go into QuickTime and see what it looks like. And we're in the maximum setting here, so if we go ahead and hit record, now we're recording from the 1080p webcam. This gives you an idea of what it looks like overall and also what it sounds like with its three mic array. Typically it sounds pretty good. And of course we have the options such as portrait, we have studio light and also reactions, which can be disabled in Mac OS 14.4 and third party applications. So all of the things you would expect as well as different mic modes with isolation. And this lets you hear what it sounds like compared to what we have with the studio mic as well. So overall, they're typically pretty good. We'll pause it here. I'll export this and let's go ahead and do that. So you can as well, you've already seen it in the video. It's exporting pretty quickly and we're done. So let's go ahead and delete that and let's take a look at benchmarks. Now I have Blackmagic's disk speed test here from the app store. On the left, we have one terabyte from the M2 on the right 512 from the M3. Let's go ahead and click start and see what we get. So write speed on the one terabyte is a little bit faster so far and read speed is a little bit faster on the 512 gigabyte so far. So we'll give it a second to run, see if it changes at all. But in general, I would expect a little bit faster write speeds on the one terabyte model where we're getting about 3,200 megabytes per second compared to 2,500 megabytes per second. Read speed though is 2,800 megabytes per second compared to about 2,400. So very close. If you're using it for regular tasks, you won't notice if you're exporting a video or something like that, maybe you'll notice a difference there. There, but I would get the larger storage if you're going to export video anyway, but pretty decent overall. Again, one terabyte, usually as you step up in size, you get a little bit faster speed, but they're not too far off. As far as benchmark scores, let's go ahead and take a look at Geekbench. 
And you can see here, here's the specs with the different versions, the M3. This one's actually on Mac OS 14.3.1, but it really shouldn't make too much of a difference there. Let's go ahead and run the CPU benchmark, and then we'll look at heat on this as well. Now, as the benchmarks are running, let's go ahead and take a look at the FLIR thermal camera. On the M3, it's a little bit warmer at about 94 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll convert those up here. And then also you'll see that if we look at the M2, we're at about 83 degrees. Now that shouldn't be too much of an issue other than that it could cause throttling. We'll see what it's like after the benchmarks complete though. Now again, they're completing and at the hottest point on the M3, we're at hundred degrees Fahrenheit. On the M2, let's go to the hottest point over here. We're again around 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So about a 10 degree difference. And again, I'll convert those up here if you haven't seen those already, but that gives you an idea that the M3 definitely seems to be a little bit warmer in this case. When it comes to the benchmark scores, we have 11,254 for multi-core compared to 9,906 on the M2. Also with single core, we have 2,993 on the M3, 2,602 on the M2. So there is a nice little bump there. It's not gigantic, but it's a nice bump up from what we had before. Of course, the heat will have to sort of escape a little bit better. Hopefully the thermals are okay while you're doing long processes that would require some more testing, but you definitely can edit 4k video with these. I have on the 15 inch and even this 13 inch I have before in many tests, so it can handle that without a problem. As far as the keyboard goes, there's no difference here from what we had before. However, one thing I wanted to mention is if you like the older style keyboards in the M1, and what I mean by that is with this wedge design, my daughter, one of my daughters actually uses this and prefers this keyboard for its more tactile feel. It does have a little bit different feel than the M2 and M3. However, I actually prefer the M3. So it just depends on what you like as far as the tactility, but they definitely feel good, both of them. As far as the way it sounds, let's take a listen. This is a new note on the new MacBook Air M3. And that gives you an idea of what it sounds like. So this is the keyboard and I have an odd typing style, but you see what it actually sounds like or hear what it sounds like. As far as the speakers go, let's take a listen to those quickly. According to the decibel level on my Apple Watch Ultra 2, we can get to about 89 decibels or so. It sounds pretty good. However, the bass is nowhere near what you get with the 16 inch. There's just not room for those additional woofers and speakers, but it sounds pretty good, especially for a 13 inch MacBook. As far as who this is for, well, if you don't actually have a MacBook at this time, maybe you have an older one, an old MacBook Air with an Intel processor, this would be a great upgrade. However, if you have an M1 or M2 and you use this for things such as Safari, maybe listening to music, doing homework, papers, things like that, I don't know that there's really a reason to upgrade other than just wanting a new one. It is great if you want to maybe use it occasionally to edit video or just work on projects, but I would recommend if you do that regularly to look at the pro models because you have active cooling as well as some additional speed and better displays. But this is one of my favorite laptops overall. However, I prefer the 15 inch and just a quick comparison with that. Again, fingerprint wise, it has a bunch of my fingerprints on it, but this gives you an idea. The shades are slightly different there as far as the blues go. And I like the 15 inch just because I like the larger display and a little bit better speakers, but it is a couple hundred dollars more. But both of these are some of the best lap laptops in the world, and I highly recommend either of them. But if you have an M series processor, it's hard to justify the upgrade unless you need something specifically like a larger display. Let me know what you think of the new M3 in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you there. And if you're using one of these or maybe using a pro, I'd love to hear from you as well. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.